नमो नमः अभिवादये सर्वेभ्यः द सेंट्रल फीचर ऑफ संस्कृत सिंटैक्स इज गोइंग टू बी व्हाट वी कॉल द KYT सीरीज ऑफ इंडिक्लाइनेबल्स एंड प्रोनाउन्स कयत इफ यू लाइक व्हाट दिस मींस इज दैट देयर इज अ स्पेशल ग्रुप ऑफ इंडिक्लाइनेबल्स एंड प्रोनाउन्स दैट स्टार्ट विद द क कार विद अ य कार और विद अ त कार Uh, and these are used to form more complicated kinds of sentences such as questions or clauses relative correlative clauses and indefinite constructions uh, let's talk about the k words in the series and how we use them to form different kinds of questions in sanskrit these k words ka karas they're similar to ka kara words in hindi like kya or kon or kab they say and all of those uh, and they're cognate with the wh question words in english like where when who how also the qu words that we find in other latin based question words uh, in other latin based languages so how can we ask questions in sanskrit you ask well you can ask a yes no question in two different ways uh, the first method is to start the sentence with the word upi Upi normally means even also like we saw in the last segment it's and it's usually placed immediately after the word it's applied to right sita upi vanam gachati sita is also going to the forest however if we move that upi to the start of the sentence it turns the whole sentence into a yes no question upi sita vanam gachati does sita go to the forest Api Sita Palam Kadati does Sita eat fruit? Api Sita Hasati is Sita laughing? As you'll know, there as you notice, there's no punctuation in Sanskrit aside from the danda that ends the sentence, whether it's a, a declarative sentence or a question. So it can be kind of tricky to when you're reading, since the api at the start is the only indicator that the sentence is a question. Uh, the other way to ask a yes/no question is to add wa. at the end of a sentence remember wa usually means or and like upi it's going to come after the noun that's being ordered right so if you say rama ha lakshmana ha wa gachati it means uh, rama or lakshmana is going but like with upi uh, if you move um, now the wa to the end of the sentence it's going to hold turn the whole sentence into a yes no question rama ha gachati wa is rama going Uh, wa by the way t- tends to be used i think more frequently in south india because it resembles the a of the dravidian languages like tamil where you can say bohala ma shall we go uh, in any way to answer a yes no question uh, you're going to either use uh, am or om which means yes or na which means no so am ramaha vanam gachati na ramaha vanam na gachati no rama isn't going to the forest Um, now, what other kind of questions can we ask? Well, there, in canonical English, there's that list of the kind of five W's, right? Who, what, when, where, how, and why. Oh, six, <laughs> six words. Uh, out of these, where, when, how, and why are going to be formed using indeclinable question words, while who and what are going to be used uh, are going to take pronouns, K pronouns, which are like going to be declined like all the other pronouns we've looked at with case, gender, and number. Uh, to ask. Where something happened, there's two words you can use: kutra or kua. Uh, you can say gajaha kutra gachati. Where is the elephant going? Mayuraha kua nrityati. Where is the peacock dancing? Uh, the answer is likely going to be in an accusative or locative case, right? Gajaha kutra gachati. Gajaha wanam gachati. The elephant is going to the forest. Mayuraha kwa nrityati. Mayuraha udyane nrityati. The peacock is dancing in the garden. Uh, let's note here that the, this ending tra in kutra. This is going to be an important suffix that you're going to attach to other adjectives like sarvatra, which means everywhere. Anyatra, which would mean elsewhere. Ekatra, which means all together in one place. To ask when something happens, you use the K word gada. So you can ask gajaha gada uttishthati what time does the elephant wake up when does the elephant wake up balaka gada roditi when is the boy crying uh, the answer here will probably be also in the locative case gajaha gada uttishthati gaja gajaha prabhate uttishthati the elephant wakes up in the morning 
अर्ली मॉर्निंग बालक कदा रोदी बालक अभ्यास काले रोदी बॉय क्राइज वन इट्स टाइम टू डू होम वर्क Uh, like kutra, you can take note of the ending da here in kada. This is the da is going to get attached to other pronominal adjectives to form words like sarva da, always, anya da, another time, or eka da, one time, once upon a time. Maybe. Uh, now, uh, how, when you when you ask how something happened, we use the k word katham. Ramha katham vanam gachati. How is Rama going to the forest? The answer is going to be put in the instrumental case, probably. Ramha ashwena vanam gachati. Rama goes to the forest by horse. Uh, Ramha pada pada abhyam vanam gachati. Rama goes to the forest with his two feet. Pada abhyam. Uh, here too, the suffix. Uh, this uh, the suffix can be attached to other adjectives. Here, the suffix is tha actually, not tham. So we can get sarva tha, all the different ways. Anya tha, a different way, another way. Uh, this is uh, how you, uh, the, that's how you ask where, when, how. Kutra uh, kada katham. To ask why something is happening, there's a few options. First, you can use the word kutaha. So Rama ha kutaha vanam gachati. Why is Rama going to the forest? You can also use a frozen ablative form kasmat. Literally, this means from what, due to what. Rama ha kasmat vanam gachati. Because of what? Due to what is Rama going to the forest? You can also use the phrase kim artham, which literally means what's the purpose. So kim artham Rama ha vanam gachati. For what purpose does Rama go to the forest? To answer these why questions, like with all questions, generally it's going to be any why question you ask is going to take a kind of complex set of sentences that involve relative correlative clauses. Because such and such happened, someone did so and so. That's why Rama goes to the forest.、Uh, sometimes though, it's going to be just an ablative, something in the fifth case. Right?、Uh, why did Rama go to the forest? Rama ha kuta ha vanam gachati. Rama ha shapat vanam gachati. Rama goes to the forest because of a curse. Shapat.、Uh, there's a couple of other indeclinable question words we can mention. Kiat. Uh, which means how much or how long or how far. So you can ex- ask, for example, you can ask, "Kiat duram Rama gachati." How far is Rama going? There's also "kati," which means how many.、Uh, so you can ask, "Kati nimesha ha nimesha ha Rama ha atra tishthati." How many minutes is Rama has Rama is Rama standing there? "Kati deva ha swarge santi." How many gods are there in heaven? Uh, so these are the indeclinable question words, the K words.、Uh, you can ask where, when, how, why, how much, how many. Let's turn to how to ask who or what.、Right? To do those, you need question pronouns now, which they're going to look just like our friends sah sah tat, but、uh, starting with a K in、uh, the kara instead of the T, the t kara or the s、uh, kara. The,、uh, instead of sah taute. One、uh, meaning that one, those two, those three or more. We're gonna have ka ka uke, who singular, who dual,、uh, who three or more. That's in the masculine. Ka ha vanam gachati, who is going to the forest? Rama ha vanam gachati. Ka u vanam gachata ha, Rama shcha, Lakshmana shcha vanam gachata ha. Rama and Lakshmana are going to the forest both.、Uh, ka vanam gachanti. Viraha vanam gachanti. The heroes are going to the forest. For feminine, we'll have ka ke ka ha. Right? Ka palam kadati. Who is eating the fruit? Sita palam kadati. Sita is eating the fruit. Ke ka ha palam kadanti. Who three or more feminine are eating the fruits? Kanya ha palani kadanti. The girls three or more are eating the many fruits. In the neuter,、uh, the singular is going to be kim. Now, meaning what?、Uh, it's different than. In fact, the rest are like the、uh, the thought forms. Kim ke kani? Which one? Which two? Which three or more?、Uh, the accusatives are going to be the same. Kim ke kani? Rama ha kim kadati? What is Rama eating? Rama ha palam kadati? Sita kim wadati? What is Sita saying? Sita sadhu iti wadati? Sita is saying great.、Uh, in these examples, kim is in the second case. It's the accusative. Vrukshe kim vartate? What's there on the tree? Vrikshe palam asti. There's fruit on the tree. Here, the kim is now in the nominative. 
Uh, like with the other pronouns, uh, you can put the k pronouns in different cases as well, the k pronouns, uh, to ask different kinds of questions about pronouns. Uh, these will follow the pronominal declensions now, not the a uh, or a uh, stems. So, ramaha ka yasaha vanam gachati. gachati. With whom, feminine, is Rama going to the forest? Sita yasaha vanam gachati. Ram, uh, Sita is going with Sita. Ramaha kasmai phalam dadati. To whom, masculine, kasmai does Rama give the fruit to? Ramaha vanaraya phalam uh, dadati. Uh, Rama gives the fruit to the monkey. Kasmat gajaha bibheti. From whom is the elephant afraid? Gajaha rakshasat bibheti. The elephant is afraid of the demon. Here we can also note that kasmat itself is going to be a, a frozen adjective, meaning a frozen uh, pronominal, meaning why, uh, as an indeclinable. So, Ramaha kasmat vanam gachati. Why does Rama go to the forest? Ramaha shapat vanam gachati. Right? We've already seen this. He goes to the forest because of the curse. So, in general, we can say uh, to uh, that, that to ask a question that involves that involves who or what, we're going to have to have a pronoun. Uh, where you need to know the gender, number, and case. Now, if you don't know the gender, uh, generally you'll either use masculine or neuter, depending on whether it's an active agent or an object uh, that's involved. So if you don't know what's sitting on the table, but you're pretty sure uh, it's not a masculine or feminine being, a person, you can ask, Utpitikayam kim asti? What's on the table? But if you know that someone, a person, has eaten the fruit and the person is a a being of some gender, you can ask kaha palam kadati, who is eating the fruit. Uh, the default gender here is masculine, uh, unless told otherwise, but it could be any gender. Uh, uh, perhaps a gender neutral way then would be to uh, say ke palam kadanti, who three or more are eating the fruit. Uh, that is, that's a masculine plural, but since it also covers a mixture of masculine and feminine gendered agents, uh, it's assuming nothing in, uh, a priori about the gender of the individuals who are eating the fruit. Uh, if that makes sense. So with that, let's pause here. Let's get to practicing forming various kinds of questions on our own. Ask questions if you want to. Uh, and uh, it can be a very powerful tool, actually, uh, to practice these. The more kinds of questions you ask, the more kinds of things you can get answers to, the more you'll learn, right? Uh, the, the more and more K words that we encounter in our texts that we're reading, it'll start to eventually click. Um, in our next segment, what we'll do is turn to the other two, the Y and T within our KYT series, the relative and correlative uh, indeclinables and pronouns. Until then, thanks for watching. See you next time. Punar milamaha and adaha. <laughs>